Welcome to Electron Online. Now let's talk a little bit about how to observe or what we can actually observe from Earth when we take a look at Mercury. Well, it turns out there wasn't a lot we could see from Mercury because it's much closer to the Sun and the distance away from the Sun is not, never very large when we have the vantage point from the Earth. Matter of fact, the maximum elongation, the distance away and angle away from the Sun from Mercury is somewhere between 18 and 28 degrees and of course that depends upon where Mercury is in its rotation or its orbit around the Sun and where the Earth is in its orbit around the Sun. So the maximum elongation is actually relatively small so it's never far away from the Sun which means we can only see it in the evening just for a little while right after sundown and in the morning a little while right before sun up and so the conditions for seeing is not very good when it comes to Mercury. On top of that, the surface features cannot be seen in visible light through a telescope from the Earth, which made it extremely difficult to try and measure the rotational speed of the planet. You couldn't see the surface features, you can't see the rotational speed. So it was assumed that the rotational speed was in sync with the orbital speed, just like for the Moon, so that the same side of Mercury was always facing the Sun. At least that's what they presumed, and they thought that for well over 100 years, ever since they tried to make the measurement of the rotational speed of the planet. But then in the 1960s, when they were able to start using radar, and they started sending radar beams of a particular frequency from the Earth to the surface of Mercury, Notice that some of those radar beams will hit the top portion of the planet and some of those radar beams will hit the bottom portion of the planet. And since the planet is rotating, the, the, the beams being sent back, reflected back from the surface, will have a different frequency and a different wavelength depending upon which side of the surface we're hit. If the planet is rotating like this, since the surface is moving away from the Earth, then the wavelengths will be elongated, meaning they will be redshifted. Here, the surface will be moving towards the Earth, and therefore the radar beams being, being back, reflected from the surface, will be blue shifted. That shift can be measured, and from that we can calculate the velocity of the surface of the planet in terms of the speed of light and the ratio of the change in the wavelength divided by the original wavelength that was sent from the radar from the Earth. So here we have the original wavelength going to the planet and then we have the shifted wavelength coming back. We can measure that shift and from that we can calculate the velocity. Then we realize that the velocity is equal to the radius of the planet times the angular velocity of the planet and from that we can calculate the angular velocity, the rate at which the, the planet rotates on its axis. And from that we discovered that the ratio between the rotational angular velocity and the orbital angular velocity ended up being a 3 to 2 ratio, not a 1 to 1 ratio as originally thought. In addition to that, even though it is hard to see the planet because it's so close to the Sun, the apparent magnitude is still quite significant at minus 1.9, which makes it almost twice as bright as the brightest star in the sky, Sirius. So it's a very visible object, it's just at a location close to the Sun, so we never get a really good look at it, like in the middle of the night, straight up above us, that would be the perfect situation, but that's not going to happen with Mercury. The angular size is 11 arc seconds, so you can see Mercury fairly well with any good sized telescope, but again, in visible light, not going to see much except just a disk. The albedo of the planet is also not very high, with other words, it doesn't reflect a lot of the light that it gets from the Sun, so again, that makes it more difficult to see the specific features on the surface. So Mercury is always going to be a difficult planet to observe, a difficult planet to learn about, and so the best solution is to send spacecraft down there, but then again, Mercury is close to the Sun, 800 degrees when you're facing the Sun, so there's all kinds of difficulties to dealing with trying to observe the planet. It's always going to be difficult, so slowly but surely we'll unlock the secrets of, of Mercury as over the years we send additional spacecraft to Mercury to try to figure out more about the planet itself. And that's how we slowly claw the information out of that planet.